Welcome back. Last time, we looked a bit about at what statistics are, a little bit of history, and an overview of the series. Today, we'll start diving into numbers. Don't worry, it should be a gentle introduction, or at least I hope. Now, we often have theories about how the world works. Many of us are naturally curious, and if you ever find yourself observing people and you start wondering, you know, why did they do that? Why are they that way? Why do different people react differently in the same situation? Those are types of questions we can start answering through statistics. For example, um, I'm the middle child in my family, and I have an older sister and a younger brother. Growing up, my mom tried to teach each of us how to play piano. And I spent lots of time practicing, but never got very good at it. Um, definitely not my cup of tea. My sister, now she was quite the musician. She did piano, later she did flute and singing, and uh, uh, certainly became the musician there. Me, I became the athlete of the family. I spent heaps of time outdoors and uh, played softball and other sports quite a bit. Now, why did my sister and I go different directions? My theory is that as a middle child, I had to distinguish myself from my sister. So if my sister was a musician, I had to be something else. This is where the process of science kicks in. One thing that we do is we come up with theories and then we try to make sense of them by collecting data and seeing if the data actually agrees with the theory that I have. And so I can, I can ha take my theory about, okay, middle children have to be different than older children, collect a set of data on perhaps older and middle children, and then see if it actually aligns with the theory that I have. And this is where uh, statistics enters in. Statistics is our way of collecting, analyzing, and making sense of the data that we collect. Um, and uh, this is what we'll be covering moving forward. Now, as I noted last time, there are two main realms of stats. Descriptive statistics, which is where we're describing the data that we have using numbers, graphs, and uh, other types of ways of describing it. And that's what we'll be starting with here. There's also inferential stats in which we make inferences about a larger population based on a sample. So we're going to start with descriptive statistics, um, which I think is important in very specific ways. Now, when I start thinking about a set of data, one thing I like to say is date your data. Now, what do I mean by that? It's really important to get to know the data that you have uh, so it, you can see whether your answers make sense. Uh, what are the characteristics of the sample that you have? You can find errors in data entry, which is always important. Uh, we can also check some of the underlying assumptions that we have. Now, unfortunately, oftentimes researchers will skip right on to inferential statistics without spending enough time with the data itself. And the problem with that is that you can end up with answers that actually don't make sense or actually don't even fit the data that you have. It's also really important to describe your data to get a sense of who it is you're working with. Who are the people in your sample? And when you're reading an article, you really want to know, you know, how, how representative is the sample? Is this a group of college undergraduates from an Ivy League university? Or is it broader? And so descriptive statistics help us to understand that. Now, there are a lot of different ways that we can describe data, um, and oftentimes we use the computer to actually analyze all of this, um, but it's good to get a good understanding of what some of these are um, moving forward. Things like frequencies, measures of central tendency, variability, visualizations, z-scores. There's also other things that we can use, but these are the core ones that we'll focus on over the, over the next few sessions. We'll start today looking at frequencies. Now, 
When we start to think about variables that we have, there are two main types of data. Qualitative data, where we might have categories, we might have uh, free response information, we could have observations. Uh, these are things in which the numbers themselves are rather meaningless. So for example, um, if I have different ethnicities, I could assign a number to each ethnicity, but there's no real meaning to a one, a two, a three, or a four. And then we have quantitative variables in which levels indicate specific numbers. And these are usually continuous values. It's a quantity or an amount. And these are the types of variables that we'll actually do our analyses on. Although with the qualitative variables, we can still describe how many of each category we have. Um, we can do some, some visualiz visualizations of these as well. So depending on the type of data that you have, sometimes all you can actually do is descriptive statistics. If I have quantitative variables, I can do more inferential stats. If I have qualitative data, all I can really do is describe it and uh, really make sense of a lot of things just through describing what's there. Um, and so it's always helpful to start with a description of the sample that I have. Who, who is in my sample? Where do they come from? How many are, they, are there? Um, and this gives us a, a, a sense of how much we can generalize the information that we have. Now when I want to start thinking about describing this data, frequencies are a very good place to start. And so this gives us an idea of how, where people fall on a scale. It can also tell me how many people are in each category that I have. Now, as an example, think about taking a survey. For example, these are questions from a well-being questionnaire that I developed called the PERMA Profiler. So it measures well-being across five different categories, positive emotion, engagement, relationship, meaning, accomplishment, and also health. Um, and uh, so in this case, you could click on the different scales and indicate that you're a seven on uh, having a purposeful, meaningful life, a five on how your health is, or what have you. And so you could go through the survey marking your scores. Now, each of your scores are what's called raw scores. Um, and uh, this is the raw data that I can actually start to work with. Now, when I collect data from a survey, after someone takes, those, takes the survey, I can actually download their scores into a survey. Now, if I'm doing this by hand, I would have a paper copy and then I could manually enter things into a spreadsheet. Um, and this is the beauty of, of online questionnaires. I could just get the spreadsheet as it is. Now, you could easily do this yourself. You could go to something like Google Forms or SurveyMonkey or Qualtrics, create a simple multiple choice survey, collect responses, and then you can actually download the spreadsheet that's underneath it. Um, now, the raw scores can be any type of data. Most of these, as you see here, are numbers. And so you can think about this as how high I scored on each of those questions. You also see here that I have some qualitative data. So for, for sex, I have males and females marked by an M and an F. Now I couldn't really, so with the M's and the F's, I could say how many males were there, how many females are there. And so from the raw scores, that we get from a survey or an, or an experiment or what have you, we can use this to start to describe the data that I have. Now, in this case, the survey that I created had three questions for each scale or e each, each category that was in there. And so we have meaning and purpose in life. There were three questions for that. For positive emotion, there were three questions for that. So sometimes I might take a, a, a composite score, which is essentially uh, averaging together three of the scores. And we'll talk more about how we average scores together next time. Um, so in this case, 
uh, positive emotion is the average response of how often I feel positive, how often I feel joyful, and how often I feel contented. And so here we see the average PERMA scores for each person. Now, when people complete a survey, we can then say, how often does each score or each composite score occur? And this is where frequencies come in. So a frequency is how often each of the scores occur within my sample. And an easy way to think about this is to graph it out. So this is a graph of the frequencies. And we see here that on positive emotion, there was one person that had a three, two people had a five and six, uh, four people had a seven, five people had an eight, etc. And we, got, we can also start to see a shape to the distribution here. A lot of the scores were up in the seven to eight range, but then there was also a few lower scores as well. Now, something like this where I'm graphing the individual numbers works when I don't have too many numbers. Sometimes I want to actually create groups uh, uh, of each of these numbers, um, especially if I have like a scale that ranges from something like 0 to 100. I would have a lot of individual scores there, but I can group those together into what's called a grouped frequency. So in this case, we see that one score fell between 0 and 2, four scores were between three and five, et cetera. And so we can take the raw scores and say, how often does each occur? And then we can plot it as either just the raw frequencies or the group frequencies in order to start to get a sense of how people score. Now it's your turn. Here are a set of scores. Can you create a simple frequency distribution? How about a group distribution? You can pause the video here and try this out yourself, and we'll also post the scores so that you can play, play with this a bit. So whenever I start analyzing data, I always start by looking at the frequency distributions. It gives me a sense of how people are responding. It can also help me identify problems with my data. Um, for example, um, if I have a scale that ranges from 0 to 10, and then someone in my data has a 75, then that probably indicates a data, data entry error. And so I'll want to fix that before I actually do some of my statistics. And frequencies will help me identify such problems. So there you have it, your first step in analyzing and understanding data. See you next time.